Hello YouTube, Shizna Gaming here. Today I'm going to show you how to port forward so that you can host your own Kerbal Space Program server. Now I know this video is long overdue and I do need to update that uh, KSP multiplayer video. And I will get to that eventually. Uh, I've just been trying to work around a lot of bugs involving the new versions of Kerbal Space Program and the servers and whatnot. And, you know, my friend and I, we've pretty much got it down, so I'll be making a video soon enough about that. Now, this, like I said, is long overdue. This is like back in the days of 0.25, I think? I don't know, 0.9's been out for a while now. So, I'm going to show you how to get the information you need, how to set up your router, and then how to make sure it's all running good and dandy. Now this, I, I'm... I must say, I'm not very prepared. I actually just saw a uh, comment on my video saying that people would really like to see me do an updated video or whatever, or a video, sorry, about this. Not updated because I've never done it before. So I decided I'm going to. Now, without boring you any further, we're going to first start by opening our command prompt. To do this, you're going to click Start. And if you're wondering why I've got no icons over here, it's because something broke. I don't know. I'll restart my computer later. You're going to open up your Start menu, and you're going to type the letters CMD, right? Uh, there you go. And it's going to open up a command prompt. Now, command prompt is a nice way to pretty much control every aspect of your computer if you know what you're doing you know, code-wise. So, it's it might seem complex to use, it's not really. What we're going to do is we're going to type ipconfig, as you can see on the screen here. And that's it. Just I'll give you a minute to type that in yourself if you're following along. You can hit enter. Anyway, no, uh, just a bit of a bit of a issue there. No, okay, so basically there's a lot of information here that you don't really want to display to the internet, but, eh, you know, honestly, it's... Eh, yeah. Anyway, it's for the sake of education. So what you're going to look for is you're going to get all these information. You're going to scroll right back up. You're going to see you typed in IP config, Windows IP configuration. Now, it's going to give you the names of each different uh, internet connection type that there is uh, your computer can have. Uh, for me, I've got like Ethernet adapter through my Evolve program and stuff like that. You're gonna, uh, I'm da words. I'm hooked up through my Ethernet right to my modem here, so I'm going to look for Ethernet adapter local area connection. That's what I'm looking for. If you were running a wireless like on a laptop, it would be one of the wireless LAN adapter networks, right? So under wire or Ethernet adapter, we get a whole bunch of information here. We are looking for the IPv4 address, and we're looking for the default gateway. Now, what do these mean? Well, the default gateway is basically your um, your uh, modem or router's address. The IPv4 is your machine's address, in this case, my computer tower. Now, your IPv4 can change if there's issues. This has changed for me a couple times, and this does invoke you know the need to redo all this port forwarding, but it's not that complex to fix. So if you want, you can write these two down, IPv4 and default gateway, right? And once that's all getting done, we're going to go ahead and start up a new web page here, right, moving command prompt this way, and we're going to go ahead and open up a new tab, right, and then while we're here, we're going to type in the default gateway, in my case, this one, hit enter, and it'll bring you to your router's configuration page, you can actually edit your modem or router in your web browser. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to go ahead and type in my information here. Uh, if you have not set a custom username and password when you got it, it will have a sticker on the front of the uh, thing that should say, or should be somewhere anyways. Okay, so we're here, and uh, I'm just going to skip over that last part there, because obviously username and passwords now. Unfortunately, each and every one of these will look different. Uh, it's all configured differently, and I, you know, often don't really know, like, uh, you, you poke around a bit. In my case, I go to Applications and Gaming, uh, and then Port Range Forwarding. You want to find Port Range Forwarding, is what you want. Uh, just search around until you find something that says Port Forwarding, Range Forwarding, Port Range Forwarding, whatever. You get to a list with, it should just all be a bunch of zeros here. I've got all these numbers for different uh, games that I've hosted. And you're just going to pick literally any one of these slots that you're going to host to. So, uh, I know this one up here is already done. I'm just going to do it again, just okay, so... We're going to pick this one, right? I like, I like this one here. Now, the KSP port is by default 6702, but we're going to go 6703 for if we want to host a, two different servers at once, right? But you're going to type in 6702 in these slots, as you can see up top here, if you want just to quickly 
look and know already what I'm doing. So 6703 is our start and end external port. No idea what an external port is, but all I know is you just enter 670 whatever in all these port openings here. In this internal IP address, you're going to put in your uh, machine's address, your IPv4 address. In my case, 192.168.0.10. Right. What this is going to do is it's going to basically tell the uh, modem that this machine will be allowing uh, data to transfer from the internet or relay data. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm not. An, I'm not a network expert. This is just my understanding. Do it. Uh, you know. Please give me a bit of leeway on that one. But okay. <laughs> I really need to start preparing these videos ahead of time. Anyways. Okay. So. Basically, yeah, this just tells the modem that this machine will be hosting something. Now, we're going to see a uh, protocol. Usually, I just do both. Both works. You know, TCP, UDP are only necessary if the game actually calls for one or the other, I find. Click Enable or Start or whatever, and then Save Settings at the bottom of the page here. Once it OKs, it'll sort of instantly refresh the page, and you are now port forwarded. So at this point, we can go ahead and start up our server, and I'll just show that because I might as well do that. Anyways, we can go ahead and... We can go exit on here. Oops, not exert, exit. There we go. Uh, KSP, DMP, and we'll find Dark Multiplayer Home. I'm just going to go ahead and maximize this one up here. We're going to get to this website. We're going to go to the downloads list. We're going to go DMP server, right? I'm just going to download down here. I've got a tin pin my way, so I actually can't see that, but I'm assuming I'm hitting it. <laughs> Once it's downloaded, we're going to open this up. And we're going to get a folder. We're going to just OK that because I know I'm using an expired WinRAR. I'm not, I don't know, I don't want to buy it. OK, so DMP server. We open it up, you get all these folders. So we're just going to go ahead and add a new folder to the desktop. You can put it wherever, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to go DMP. And we're just going to go ahead, up one. Oh heck, we could actually just drag and drop this whole folder here. There we go, that works better. Get rid of that folder. Bring DMP server down here, open this up. We're going to go DMP server .exe. Uh, no, OK, run run and it's going to generate a bunch of files. There we go. So now I've got a bunch of these done. We're going to go stop. No, try to stop. Uh, quit. Right. S slash quit. There we go. <laughs> a bunch of different servers do it different ways. This one's slash quit. So we're going to go into uh, DMP server settings.txt. Open it up. It'll bring up a notepad file or wordpad or whatever your default program is and you're going to get a bunch of information. You're going to look for hashtag port. Now, hashtags aren't like Twitter. It's not going to, uh, you know, pick a tag. Uh, in ha a hashtag in the the way this uh, server runs is called a comment. It's something that the compiler doesn't read. It just ignores it. So we can see port, the port the server listens on. So we can go port 6703 is what my port's going to, what my server's going to run on. Uh, we can edit some other stuff over here. I like the sandbox mode, game difficulty, no idea what that even really means. Uh, whitelisted, mod control, I like mods, so we're just going to turn this off since I don't have a, it's not a public server, uh, you know, people uh, won't be connecting, they won't be having, you know, it'll just be my friends and I. Uh, other stuff here, it's usually pretty pretty well set, so control S to save, alternatively, alter, uh, alternately you can go file, save, close it, I'm getting a weird mouse flicker, hopefully it's not as bad for you run the server again and you can see it'll just load these couple things up and it says done done and now we're done like dinner with that said we can go ahead and start up Kerbal Space Program uh, there it is programs KSP now hopefully this is the KSP I'm thinking of that's through my Steam, I have no idea, but I'll bring it back once it's loaded. Okay, we are back after that short little break. And by short little break, I mean time for me to go have dinner and stuff because I got completely sidetracked. Anyways, we're here, and if I remember correctly, I just showed you how to forward your ports and set up your server. Next, we're gonna test. So my player name, of course, Mike, as is my real name, we're gonna go, you're gonna, once you load up, blah, once you load up, you're gonna see the main screen and then this window here will appear. John won't be a default thing, that's my friend's server. And we're going to go ahead and add a server. Now, the, the server name is going to be, uh, I don't know, let's call it, uh, we'll call it just test because I'm not, I'm not keeping this server. Address. We're going to go 
local host because I don't want to give you my IP address. That's just a bad idea. And six seven six seven zero three is my port running. Uh. Okay, here's here's the thing. If you want people to connect to your server, you need to know your, your uh, internet IP address. It's not the same as your local IP. It's not the 192. Whatever. It's actually uh, if you go if you go literally just on Google and type in my IP, it, the first thing that'll pop up is your IP address number. That you know, something dot something dot something dot something. Right? It should be four sets of digits. Uh, the first three should be two digits, and the last one should be three digits. I think. At least that's how it is here in you know, British Columbia, Canada. But. Uh, Anyway, that IP is what you'll enter in the address here. Uh, if you if you're like me and you know have a reason for it, you can type in localhost, and if if it's you know works, usually it works with servers. It'll just uh, connect to itself in a more efficient manner than trying to run through your internet and back. But you know, a good testing way is to put in your IP. So we're gonna go ahead and add server. Click test. Connect. Connected. Handshaking. Synchronizing. And we are in. We are in. It load up. Do its thing. Yep, got it. And there we go. This is our server running. And if I go ahead and bring up my server window, there it is. It's now giving us a bunch of information. Yep, you can see it's saving vessels and such. Get kerbals, sending data to me and stuff. And you can. Saving five snares from the module or modules from Mike, blah blah blah. It'll give you everything that you know. You can go, you know, say hello or help, and it'll say you know, the server will broadcast it. You can even go, just type in hello, which is what I meant to type, and it'll broadcast it. You can go. You can kick me. <laughs> I got kicked from the server, right? So I can go back to test, connect back, you know, load back in. Funny stuff like that. Don't ban yourself, though. That's a heck of a problem to undo. So, there you go. Hopefully I've helped. If you have any questions or problems, feel free to ask me. However, I can't promise I can... I, or, I cannot promise that I'll, I will be able to solve your problems, but I'll give it my damn hardest attempt to figure it out because any issue could happen to me as well, so I'd like to know how to fix it if I run into it. Thank you for watching, Shizna Gaming. Stay tuned, and I do hope to be bringing more content soon. I've been a bit idle lately. My health has been kind of, you know, shit. So, hopefully, once that gets resolved fairly soon, I will be able to bring you lots more content. I hope to be on like nearly near daily uploads type thing, maybe every couple days or so. Anyway, check out my other videos if you're ever bored, and feel free to smack that subscribe button because hey, why not? Hello YouTube, Shizny Gaming here, and welcome to my first outro. Now, I suck at this and I don't know what I'm doing, and my camera preview is lagging, so it's confusing me a little bit. But anyways, thank you for watching that video. Feel free to check out some more content. I'm probably going to put something right around there. Maybe there'll be an overlay around me. Who knows, it'll be more of an experiment this time, but welcome to the very first outro I've ever done. Uh, I probably will put something... Maybe I'll put something like Scott Manley up there. Oh, he's a cool, he's a cool YouTuber. Check him out. Thanks for watching.